this country, television is no novelty. But in America, the latest development is the throwing of teleparties, as they're called. At these get-togethers, the practical possibilities of television are explored, and the principles of visual broadcasting explained. The kinescope tube, as they term it, is fitted into the receiver. Now, this is the instrument that receives the electrical impulses and recreates the image. In other words, it takes the transmission and turns it into pictures. About 10,000 lines of light a second. The iconoscope is the magic eye of the camera, identical with our cathode ray tube. From the top of the Empire State Building, television transmissions are made over a short wave to metropolitan areas. The waves do not follow the Earth's curve, but are transmitted only to the horizon. In a specially equipped studio at Radio City, arc lamps and cameras are placed in position for the televising of an orchestral concert. Experts make last-minute adjustments to the camera, a marvel of complicated mechanism. The powerful lenses. The cameraman watches the action on the ground glass and changes focus by twisting a handle. Change of light is made by a technician on the floor below. They're all set for the broadcast and engineers put on their earphones ready to receive instructions from the director. So, music maestro, please. Now we'll hand you over to our American commentator, an ear and eyewitness of the performance. Each of the cameras used in this broadcast is making a different angle of the same scene. This long shot camera is permanently placed to get a view of the entire orchestra. A second camera on a wheeled truck is used to make close-ups of the orchestra and its individual members. And this is rolled around the studio during the broadcast. On the screen in the control room, we see a scene made by the close-up camera. After this has run for a few seconds, the control engineer switches over to the other camera and the scene changes to a long shot of the entire orchestra. The director manipulates the cameras to keep the scene changing and to avoid monotony, instructing the cameramen and engineers by telephone as the program progresses. All right, switch to one. Now roll into a close-up of the string section. Now pan across the orchestra from the brass to the strings. Back to your original position and pan over to include the conductor. And so a new industry steps out of the laboratory into the limelight as television makes its bow to the American public. Where it will go from here is any man's guess. For while it fills a long felt need for visual entertainment and instruction in the home, its scope and audience will be limited for some time to come. But no matter what its future may be, it brings to us today the realization that a milestone of progress has been passed and science has made a reality of pictures from the sky.